What's up guys? My name's Cam, you're watching Sarai Garage, and today I'm going to show you how to replace the three main toggles on a R35 Nissan GTR. And these three toggles control the vehicle dynamics control, the suspension, and uh, the transmission. Now let's get started. Alright guys, so just to be clear, these are the three switches I'm talking about. And uh, real quick, the reason we're replacing them is because of a very common issue with the R35s. Uh, the LEDs that control, or the LEDs that are placed behind all these switches, uh, a couple of them have burned out on my brother's GTR. We'll, uh, we'll record a clip at night and you guys can see uh, uh, mainly the uh, LEDs in the middle of all the switches are burning out and a couple of the switches or the LEDs at the bottom are burning out. So what uh, I'm actually going to do, actually let me tell you this, if you want to get this replaced by a dealer, they will not replace the individual LEDs. Um, they'll tell you to replace this whole unit. Uh, the unit uh, retails for around $650, I think. And if you buy it wholesale through a dealer, which you can do online, um, even wholesale, the cheapest I could get this part was $414, um, plus shipping and tax. <coughs> Call it $450. And uh, then if you want to get it installed by a Nissan dealership, it's still an additional like $100, $200, somewhere around there. But what I'm actually going to be doing here today to uh, fix this problem, if you guys have the same problem, is I'm going to show you how to remove this yourself. And me personally, I joined uh, Nissan GTR uh, Facebook clubs and groups, and there's a lot of cool, helpful people in the community there. And there's actually a bunch of people that replace these LEDs um, for our members and uh, do it really cheaply. So I have one guy uh, that's going to help me out here. I'm going to pull this out, ship it to him. He's going to replace all the LEDs for $50. That's parts and labors combined. And then uh, he's going to charge me whatever it costs to ship it back as well, same day. And we're just going to plug it back in. So um, you can do it through the dealer, brand new. It's, it's a $1,000 repair. You can DIY it yourself at your house and get this part wholesale. Even if you do it yourself, it's still going to cost you around $450. Or, I recommend joining an R35 club. There's a bunch of guys that do a lot of light works, custom headlights, custom LEDs. That guy actually does a bunch of um, custom LED work for a lot of the GTR guys. So, uh, people send him entire units. He changes all these. Uh, normally, these lights are orange. You'll see it in the nighttime clip. Um, he changes them to nice white and he adds custom colors and a bunch of crazy stuff. And that only costs $50. So, if you do have this problem, um, that's what I recommend you go out and doing join the Facebook uh, club I think the one I'm in on Facebook is just called uh, R35 owners club or something uh, we'd love to have you and uh, there's a ton of cool people on there just like me and we love to help everybody in the community so with all that out of the way uh, let's get into it here Joy, take it out of the, take it actually let's roll the footage of uh, what it looks like at night and then I'll show you guys how to repair it so we're inside the GTR now at night so you guys can really get a good look at what the LEDs look like. Um, here are the three toggles. You can see, um, here let me turn off the light, you can see right off the bat this third one doesn't even light and look you can kind of see these white ones both are actually flickering. Right now it's just this one but the other one and it turned off. The other one flickers as well and turns off and um, of course you can push them up or down to go into the various modes. Uh, for us all the R modes light up perfectly fine, like you can see right there. But uh, the more comfort modes, like save, when you hold it down right here, save, you can kind of see that blue light flickering. But if I shut off the light, you can see it's like done, right? Um, same with this comfort suspension. Comfort suspension works perfectly. For our VDC, it should be orange. It works sometimes. It's hit or miss, right? So that's what all of them look like uh, in basically comfort. So like I said, this is a really common problem on GTRs, and it's not just um, you know localized to those three toggles. It actually affects all of the lights. These LEDs wear out. Um, I've, I've seen a lot of uh, photos and videos about the main uh, speedometer lights burning out. Nissan just put like really um, junky LEDs all inside the cabin. But luckily for us, this car is pretty fresh, pretty new, and it's only these toggles that are going out, out right now. So let me show you guys how to uh, 
remove these toggle switches and replace it so you can have your GTR looking all nice and clean again. Alright guys, so me personally, when I first approached this, I was pretty scared too because this is like a very serious component of the car, right? It controls so many expensive things, but this repair is actually super simple and straightforward. And there's actually only like three steps to it, okay? The first step is to remove this trim around uh, here. And then when we remove it, there's going to be two screws, one on each side. We're going to unscrew that and then the whole thing comes out and you unplug it and we're done. So. Uh, like I said, this uh, little this is actually just plastic. It's, it looks metal. It has a metal finish to it, but it's plastic. It's one big piece starting from up here all the way down here. And uh, if you've ever worked on your car before, you, uh, it's, uh, it's just plastic clips. They're sliding plastic clips is what's holding this in. And when you first do it, I understand, like, these cars are so expensive. We care about them so much, and it hurts, like, ripping on them, right? Like, it took me two days to get enough courage to, like, pull on this hard enough to pull it out. But really, um, just, like, build up pressure onto it and it'll come out um personally like me personally i don't pull it from up here because this is a pretty skinny piece it could crack right this down here it's a big fat piece it's not going to crack just just start squeezing and pulling it out Jeez, my hands are sweaty this is probably not the best most and i just put on lotion this is a stupid idea okay there it goes there it goes and it's out and you can just nicely there you go i bet it looks a lot more like dramatic than it is but um joe can they see this piece right here yeah yeah so with ours yeah you can see just sliding clips that go into the little slots in here there's five in total and these two have like um what would i call this like uh microfiber wrapped tape around it actually the whole piece has it all around uh to prevent you know um uh, vibrations and uh, rattles and stuff so that's the first piece let me just do the same to the other side the other side is actually a bit easier for us see yep comes out just like that same deal five clips three at the top two at the bottom the bottom two have the little microfiber wrapping and the same with this whole edge and it comes off just like that and now jot uh come a little closer and show them it's got two phillips head screws here and here you can see that right I do not believe these upper Phillip head screws are for this. I think it's mainly for this upper thing, but uh, we'll uh, see what happens. Now, um, let me go grab a screwdriver and then we'll continue with this uh, removal. All right, guys, so me and my brother Jode actually just did the repair right now just to make sure we knew what we were talking about before we filmed it. Didn't look like idiots. And uh, there is a change of plans. So. Uh, before we cut to that clip, we said it was just these, you know, the plastic panels, these two screws, and out it comes, right? Uh, not the case. You actually have to remove this big boy right here too, but don't worry. It's super simple, very easy. We just did it. It takes two seconds. So um, most of this is a bit loose already right now because we just did it. We just put it back together to demonstrate. Um, like I said, you do want to replace or take out these two bottom screws down here. Okay. And uh, then uh, you want to you want to take out these two screws as well. These are the only so those bottom two screws hold in this piece, and the top two screws hold in this big piece over here. And uh, in addition to that, both of these pieces are also held in with more plastic sliding clips, just like the uh, plastic trim uh, panels were that we originally removed. All right, so once you get all four of these screws uh, removed. All you want to do after that is, um, like I said, like you see these four things right here? Joe, they see that? These big four plastic pieces right here? There's actually, zoom in a little bit. Can they see the slots? You see the, you see the, let's do it on this side. Look, can you see these empty slots right here, here, and here? Okay, that is where our side panels slide into, the plastic clips on that. And this is that same plastic clip, and it slid into a hole just like this. So all you want to do, actually, is um, slip your fingers in between here and kind of wiggle it out, okay? And it'll come out. Now, of course, this came out a little easier than... Um, yours probably will because yours is in there nice and secure ours is a little loose because i loosened it up and uh that's all there is to it guys there's just these four clips and then there's three oh there's a clip down here too now that i th see it but um there's three cables connected to the back of this thing okay 
Uh, you can disconnect here. Show them from the top. Show them from the top. Can they see all the clip, uh, the cables and stuff? Yeah, they're just standard uh, connections. You just have to squeeze them up top and pull them out, right? I'm gonna try to not do that. Uh, actually, you know what? Let's cut the tape. Let's see what we can do here real quick. All right, guys. So uh, we did cut the tape there. Uh, I'm sure nobody wants to watch me and George struggle with wires for like five minutes. But uh, we did remove the two outer cables. They came out really easily. Uh, this middle one is being uh, quite the problem child. It's not, it doesn't want to come out no matter what we use. We tried using plastic trim removal uh, pieces, but we're just gonna leave it in for now. Uh, the main thing I wanted to show you guys is this. This is what the head of the clips look like. Do you want to make sure they can see that? Um, this is the bottom side that you're looking at. This is what they, it looks like at the bottom. This is the part that you squeeze in right back here and it flexes, hopefully you can see that, and you pull it right out. This is how it looks like plugged in, okay? And it plugs in just like that. This is what the back of the panel looks like. I'm sorry I can't twist it anymore, but that wire's still in there. Uh, basically, me and Joe have been struggling with that middle wire for like five minutes, and I literally hate playing with these wiring harnesses more than anything because they're so delicate, and if you mess it up, it's like it turns to a huge problem. So um, we're just gonna leave that middle one in there uh, because like, we don't even need to, we don't care about this piece anyways. We really just want to get to this thing and all we needed to do was lift this up to get access to this, right? So it's fine. We're going to leave it in like that. Now, um, if you want to go ahead and show them, you're going to have to come over me real quick. There is one more uh, wire connected to this uh, piece down here. Can they see it? It's right down here in the middle, right? Uh, there is a same type of tab, but uh, on this one, the part that you squeeze is actually at the top. So what we're going to do here is uh, I'm going to try to pull this out. It's held in by the same type of plastic uh, plastic tabs. And we're going to pull it out a little bit so we get a little bit more access to that. And hopefully the wire should come out real nice and easy and uh, we're done. So uh, let me go test that real quick. And if everything's all good, we'll shoot it and uh, show you guys what we did. All right, guys, uh, like I said, everything we said ended up working. Um, we did uh, do a test run. And uh, so basically all you have to do is uh, yank this out. It takes a bit of force, just like these things because these clips are pretty tight. But um, holding it around like this, I held it like, like Jot held this piece up. And then with both hands like this, okay, I was holding it like this, um, with my thumb on top of here, I, I yanked it and jiggled it back and forth and it just dropped right down. And uh, now, here, let me put this back in. Now we can see our little wiring harness and we can just disconnect it real quick here. Uh, is this one gonna give us problems like the first one? Let's see, oh, I think we need a Right, guys it's been about a good 30 45 minutes it's a lot darker outside now but we finally got the piece removed um, this gave me a lot of trouble because out of all the videos I watched what a lot of people did is they um, if you guys have seen these videos as well you'll notice that uh, a lot of the other ones on YouTube they kind of uh, edit and cut out the steps where they pull out the wires I'm really trying to show everybody what exactly all these pieces look like because it makes a huge difference for example None of the videos we watched showed what this big complete wire looked like, so we were doing the wrong thing for like 20 minutes. Here, Joe, uh, disconnect the thing from the tripod. I'll show you guys. I want you guys to get a good look at what this wire looks like, completely disconnected. I'll show them real quick. So, the wire, the wire plugs into the back of the piece right here, right? This is your toggle switch. And now, the wire is right here, okay? Um, let me see if I can dim down these lights so you can get a better glimpse at it. There you go. So originally, because I've worked on uh, my grandpa's Toyota Camry and there's a uh, when I was working on wiring harnesses there, there's a clip like this and what you actually had to do was pull this top one and slip it underneath this little like bridge design in front of it and then um, this white piece was part of the piece underneath and it would all slip right through and this upper white piece would stay in place. That's what I thought this clip was like, right? But um, so all I was trying to do the first time was keep pressing on the top and pushing it out underneath this bridge because um, that's what I thought it was. But clearly you can see this is all way one big massive unit. So 
after looking at like a bunch of different forum posts and all this other stuff, I finally found one guy that posted pictures of the repair process. And in the pictures, I found out that it's one big chunk like this. And so when you're doing it, don't be afraid to like, like originally when we were doing it, let me try to focus it in here. We were only trying to pull from this outer ridge, this white one. Once we knew that it was safe to pull the whole piece out, we were able to grab it from the outside as well and really, you know, uh, apply a lot more force to it. And we were able to take it out. No problem. So when you're doing this repair, just uh, make sure you understand that you can take that whole thing out. It's not a big deal. And uh, like I said, once you take that out, here's the piece. Um, uh, if I didn't mention it uh, in detail enough, these are the two clips. These are just guide pins, but these are the main two clips that hold in the thing over here. I watched the clip that I talked about removing this just to make sure uh, I cover my bases here. When I removed it, I removed it with two hands, guys. I didn't just put it on one side and toggle it back and forth or whatever. I had both my hands like this. I, I mean, I can't show you because I'm holding the camera, but both of them were on. One on each side and pull it out so that there's no variation in, in applied force on any of this and... Uh, anything snaps okay so um you might need a second person to help you if you don't pull this out or uh you very well could have just uh, lightly pushed it back in and then with both your hands pulled out the bottom piece and like i said pull that out and it's all good so make sure uh when you're pulling this out you do it you know with both your hands one hand on each side and when you're pulling this wire out make sure you understand that this whole white piece comes out not just the back ridge Okay, because we're kind of going off of this as well. I'll show you. See how this white ridges like stay inside and then the the white part of the wire comes out. Um, that's what we thought it was going to be like on this bottom piece, but it's a bit different. Um, it's this like vanilla looking ridge that stays and uh, all that white stays in place. I really hope uh, this helps a lot of you guys um, and saves you a lot of frustration and struggle like uh, uh, me and George had to go through one week later all right guys so um the guy in the facebook group got this part on tuesday and it is now saturday and we already have it back so um like i said a lot of cool guys on there super fast turnaround didn't even take a week and shipping cost me like 21 dollars to ship it to them since i paid for the box and bubble wrap too and then 15 bucks to ship back so what 36 dollars in shipping and 50 bucks to pay him to do it. All in all, this repair cost us $86. $86, that's it. So, like I said, we got the part back, I'll just show it. There it is. So, let me show you guys how to put everything back together and we'll see if he actually did fix everything. Um, he's a really cool guy, he sent pictures uh, the whole time through Facebook Messenger of like him putting it back together and like having like the whole grid opened up and like um, he showed me that all the bulbs were working and stuff so I have no doubt in my mind that it's gonna all work but I'll show you guys a screenshot of that and uh, anyways let's go show you guys how to put it back together again it should take like two minutes and we'll be done cool. all right guys so to put it back together again it's gonna be the same process but in reverse uh, that we follow to you know uh, take everything out um, first you know we're gonna have to connect this cable back in that took us forever to uh take apart or get out of there so let's try to do that oh you know what let me start the car up gives us a little bit more space instead of it being right here it's a little easier to plug it back in you know um, so uh, when you're plugging it back in make sure the tab that little geez, that little thing is at the top let's plug it back in should we plug it in with the car off let's see let's restart it see if it see it all on camera like that or is that light like really yeah. ruining it okay now these are the buttons that we really care about the bottom buttons these are the ones that are oh actually here um let's turn this off 
turn your light off too real quick turn the camera light off so we can show them that like look the middle buttons are working perfectly too right they're all perfect and now let's try save Ooh, look at that super bright compared to what we had before right George? let's try comfort comfort was perfect and gotta hold this on there you go awesome and uh, like I said we asked him to uh, we asked him to do it in the standard like OEM colors but if you want to do custom colors they can do that too so let's just go ahead uh, there are two little tabs back here George you're gonna have to swing close you're gonna want to lock in these two tabs and these two bottom ones into these holes down here make sure they all line up when you're putting it all back together also make sure these screw holes on the side line up perfect and then we can just same thing these little guide pins or whatever you call them the sliding I don't know I can't remember what they're called but these sliding tabs just line them up and push it back into place awesome and now we have to put our four screws in I have them in screws should be black. The Phillips head screws look like this. Cool. Um, just screw all of these back in. When you're screwing these back in, just like uh, screwing anything else in life, uh, don't ever tighten one screw all the way until you have all the other ones at least partially in their holes. The reason for that is if you just Put your first screw in and tighten it all the way it's gonna kind of tug the whole part over to its side with pressure and then these other screws will not line up correctly and you will mess up the threading of the screw for the other holes so just lightly screw in all four then once they're all in this one went in a little bit. Try that. all right once they're all in then you can tightly screw don't over tighten them by the way, there's no need to over tighten them, it really does not need to be over tightened. Just enough, you're going to know what enough is. When it starts getting a little tough to screw it, just stop. So um, that's all the difficult parts. Then we got these two little trim pieces left, you know, uh, just line up these little sliding tabs, there's five of them, line them up and push in, slide them in. This one is in, and same for the other side. Five, line it up, slide it in. And there you go. Here, Joe, turn the light off real quick. Awesome. So that's what it looks like as a finished product at night. Right here. This is from the driver's point of view. Okay, beautiful. Let me focus on that real quick. And here's with a little light on it. Oh, you guys can't see much with the light on. Uh, let's do with the door lights on only. There you go. Main point is, it's back to looking factory stock. And it only costs us about 90 bucks instead of buying a whole new part for 400 and or <laughs> that's wholesale actually a whole new part from the dealer is 600 and then paying the dealer another two three hundred to install it so instead of spending a thousand dollars we did this whole repair for 80 bucks 90 bucks there you go all right guys well um i'll uh i'll throw some photos in at the end uh some like high quality photos at the end of the video uh if you guys still want to see more of what they look like but other than that that's pretty much it it's a very simple repair i thought it was going to be a lot harder but it's really not uh just take your time when you're removing these they're you know don't be too forceful um but other than that as always guys i hope you guys found this video um 
entertaining and I hope it helped you guys. And with that, I'll see you guys next video. Young get on the beat boy. Designed these wiring harnesses first of all. Why are they so skinny? The little push-in tabs. Why would you do that?